Sir, picking up from that report, you're of the opinion that government borrowing at this stage remains prudent even as debt-to-GDP ratio has exceeded uh, international accepted benchmark of 60%, even hitting a record of 12.09 trillion pesos. Why is that? And does that mean that the government has a room to borrow more? Well, uh, well, that's the big picture, Jess. The overall debt-to-GDP ratio at around uh, 60%, which is the international threshold. So it means that uh, the government's debt should be either well that's a, well that should be the maximum enabled to maintain the relatively favorable credit ratings or better yet if uh, that would go down further and that would be a function of uh, a faster economic uh, growth and recovery we we have seen this already almost 20 years ago when debt to gdp ratio came from a peak of 70% levels uh, then it, it gradually went down. Actually, it took about uh, around seven to eight years for it to go down to uh, around 50% levels and another seven to eight years for it to go down to 40 and reach the low, the 39.6% the, the, the low, which happened to be prior to the pandemic in 2019. So that provided a lot of buffer, mm -hmm. a lot of leeway for the government to increase its borrowings because uh, everybody else around the world also did the same in funding for the various COVID programs, which mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah, that's why uh, our, the country's credit ratings have been maintained uh, over the past two years, uh, at least at, well, at, at, at the very least compared to other countries, uh, which, uh, mm -hmm. well, some of which uh, saw uh, some downgrades in either the actual credit ratings or in the outlook. So if you look at the, the breakdown, uh, the foreign debt to GDP ratio. It's uh, of course it's it's still at the late twenties level that mm -hmm. is still considered relatively low. Mm -hmm. Of course that's learning from the lessons in the past crisis periods over the past over many years and decades. So mm -hmm. uh, the government as well as the private sector have been prudent in managing foreign debt, especially when it comes to hedging uh, foreign exchange risks. Okay. So, Sir, just to interrupt you on that point, since you've already mentioned it, is there still a risk on the table that our credit rating might deteriorate or is that complete? have we already managed to circumvent that? Well, definitely, Danny, it's a function of uh, what the government does, especially now that uh, we're, we're near the elections, what the new administration, what the new president would prioritize when it comes to fiscal spending. So far, the Philippines... Uh, has been fortunate to have uh, good economic teams over the past 20, well, at least past 10 to 20 years in terms of managing the country's uh, fiscal performance in a sustainable manner, as has been manifested by the uh, improvement or the easing of the debt to GDP ratio over the years. So, it all, well, of course, uh, well, the COVID-19 pande COVID pandemic, that's something unforeseen and uh, un uh, for two issues, in the sense that uh, many other countries around the world also, uh, well, borrowed a lot. Uh, of, co of course, it's really to pump prime the economy, provide support, financial assistance, the hardest hit sectors. So now, that's really, that's based on economic cycles. Uh, that's the role of uh, government and central banks. So they, they, they do provide all the necessary fiscal and monetary policy support. Mm -hmm. uh, all out, especially this one. This is the, the pandemic, unprecedented in recent memory. So now, when economic conditions improve, the, there would be a need to somewhat uh, uh, compensate for that uh, in the sense that there's a need to further intensify tax collections, the need to further bolster the recurring uh, tax revenue sources by way of uh, the various... Mm -hmm. uh, tax reform measures, uh, ex uh, implementing the existing ones and coming up with uh, new ones. So uh, th that would be the, the more sustainable path going forward. 